Romans 10. In Romans 10, it says, uh, verse 14. And it really impacted me that, um, you know, sometimes as Christians now, as I can speak as a Christian now, uh, that we can look at people and say, well, why don't they know? Why, why don't they understand this? Why can't they get it? Uh, but in Romans 10, uh, verse 14, it says, how, they sh- how then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how should they hear without a preacher? And how should they preach unless they are sent, as it is written? How beautiful are the feet of those who preach the gospel of peace, who bring glad tidings of good things. And it was really impacted me that how can they know unless we tell them? And I couldn't honestly say that uh, probably two, three years in my Christian life could I see what I would see as the organized church actually physically doing this. I couldn't see it. Um, I'd gone to a part-time uh, Bible um, course at Ashburnham uh, to understand this Bible. When I first became a Christian, I had to know, you know, what was contained herein. And I did a two-year course where we went from generation, uh, Genesis to Revelation and in the first year. And then the second year, what do you do with that? So when we got to the what would we do with that, this, this, this imprint that was on my mind about the Jehovah Witnesses knocking doors and sharing... And I'm thinking, this is good news that we have. This is changes in life. But how can they know? And so there was, there was never, a, never a doubt that that's what God wanted me to do, to go out and tell people. Mm. And I've had many, many people, especially in my early years, knocking doors, that uh, people that are, you know, really well-meaning church people say, why are you doing this? But whenever I read the scriptures, I think, Nowhere in here does it say you don't do it. It says, love God with all your heart. Yeah, that was the first instruction. Love your neighbor as yourself and go out and tell. Now, you're maybe loving God. Sometimes, you know, we put him first when we get it right. Loving our neighbor as ourselves, that's quite tricky. But go out and tell. But are we actually going out and telling? And that was the thing that really empowered me. And... Uh, when I had the opportunity uh, from home evangelism, uh, I remember a a dear friend of mine who actually helped finance me going to Ashburnham, said, I think this is the calling for you, John. I don't know about you, but uh, when you're in church life, there's always someone who has something that they need doing, so they suddenly see this amazing calling on your life. You haven't seen it, but they've seen it for you. And um, he said, I think this is right up your street, and he gave me an application form. And I read it and I thought, there's no way. You know, this just is not doing it for me. And I screwed it up and put it, mm. in, a, put it in a bin. And uh, some months later, I remember going to Welcome Baptist. And uh, in the church, in the foyer, we used to have these pigeonholes. And uh, being good way, we were at this end, sort of A and G. And uh, I was just getting a letter out from this end. And at the other end, and this is a solid structure, out of the other end, this piece of paper floated to the floor. And I thought, oh, that's weird. So I went down and picked it up, and it was an application form uh, for home evangelism. The very thing that I'd screwed up and put in the bin. And so I got home, and I sat down with Avril and said, um, who's now my wife, I'm now remarried, for those that uh, wouldn't understand that. And um, I said, I don't know, there's something here. And I had an invite to, to go and have a week in Herne Bay, to do a, a week, just testing it out, see how it went. And the very first door I knocked, I knew there and then that was what God was calling me to do. Yeah, and it's, it's very just so much. In the my Apostle heart. Paul himself says this, doesn't he? The love of God constrains me. There's mm. something about the fact that, you know, if you have tasted and seen that God is good, mm. and you want to share that with other people. Yeah. And this is, this is why many people, I sometimes think that we'll come on to that. Uh, when it comes to sharing their faith, they mm. find it very difficult to share. Yeah. It's really not sharing anything other than no. what God is, what has God has done in your life, isn't it? Mm. But we'll we'll explore that yeah. in a minute. But I think mm. it's a, it's important that you that you're talking about your 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 calling, your ministry. Mm. And we had an email from Lorraine. Thank you, Lorraine, for for your text. A very important thing you you have raised. I accept that. It's important to that we understand that it is the Holy Spirit mm-hmm. that leads us into the truth. Now, we can't bash people no. with the truth or we can't hit them with the, over the head with it. Mm. But we are told to, well, simply share mm. the gospel mm. with people and, and, and being careful what we say. The content of the gospel 
is as important and the substance of the gospel is as important and the style sometimes substance get, can get lost in the style but mm. simply share yeah. what God has done mm. it is not what we have to do it's what God has done and when we people understand what God has done the Holy Spirit will mm. give them the power mm. to respond to uh, uh, re uh, to respond mm. to as to what they need to do mm. and it's very important that we understand that mm. and we're not negating the role of the Holy Spirit in anything that we're talking about yeah, today absolutely we respond we root that we anchor that don't we John mm, absolutely into what mm. the work of the mm. Holy Spirit the Holy Spirit is the spirit that Jesus yeah. after he went up to heaven mm. uh, we were sent to do the work absolutely. of convicting people of sin yeah. righteousness and of judgment it is it yeah. is his work so thank you Lorraine for mm. that and uh, do a, a email. It's a very, very important yeah. point Lorraine has raised. Yeah. And others out there want to email or uh, mm. text us, do that. Yeah. And uh, it's an opportunity for you to explore the workings of God and how mm. God and us working together mm. uh, can accomplish a lot more mm. than we think. It's all of God. Mm. Because God is the one who gives yeah, us the ability to do it anyway. Mm. So no one can boast, as we read mm. in Ephesians chapter 2. And I mean in that, there is, a, there is an incredible comfort knowing that whether we sat down with somebody and took them word by word through the whole Bible, that's not necessarily how they'll find Christ. It is by the power of God's Holy Spirit. He goes before, he goes with, and he goes after. And one of the great joys for me as a door-to-door -door evangelist was the fact that I knew when I'd finished and gone home, God was still out there working. You know, And I think that's an important thing for us to remember. And I always remember a lady coming up to me um, in one of the churches I was working and she said John I just w need to talk to you about a situation I have across the road from me uh, my friend has some builders in and because she's not there during the day I invited the builders to come over to me for, for tea and they, they were kind of settled into tea and lunch and I'm making them cakes and stuff and they're really enjoying the experience uh, but now uh, this has gone on for a couple of weeks I need now to be sharing the gospel I need now to tell them about Jesus. And I, I have the great joy just to say, no, you don't. You're doing exactly what you should be doing. And when you need to respond, they will ask you. And I think we have this fear inside us that unless I physically tell them, you need Jesus, or, you know, you need to find God, that then we scare them. And I think it's about actually being very gentle and it's about being, and it's about doing, don't hear me right here, you need to go out, with it, but it's being Christ wherever you are. And I believe God's Holy Spirit touches people's lives and they'll come to you and ask you. My wife yesterday, in the church where we are, had a lady come up to her and say, what's the difference between where you, where you are and where I am? And she actually ended up taking a, a journey into her life away with her. But that wasn't something that she'd sort of, my wife had set journey up. Into, journey into life is an yeah, yeah, evangelistic. Is, yeah, evangel, uh, evangelistic uh, attract. Mm. But, it, you know, it's not necessarily how much we say. In fact, sometimes our words become a, a, a problem to people. And as an evangelist and quite a trappy sort of a person, I have to always remember that. But, yeah, the power of God's Holy Spirit moving through um, is where we need to be and we need to be in tune and you've been working you worked with uh, home evangelism for how many years I worked two years part-time uh, while I carried on being a head gardener mm -hmm. and then five years full-time yeah. you know I mean is it always been a, a good reception on the doorstep have you ever had any you know something you can share with us of the rejection you may have received um, I can honestly say I've not really sensed bad rejection mm -hmm. I've, I've been sworn at twice which in in seven years is pretty good mm -hmm. Um, yeah, apathy is, is, is high, uh, but most